All right. Today's lecture involves uh, dealing with limits. Very, very basic idea. I don't want to get into too much math right off the bat. Excuse me a minute while I try to find the right pen for this process. There we go. All right, anyways, introduction to limits. As I said, we are going to do some very, hopefully, intuitive stuff for you to understand how this stuff works, or how limits work. We'll get into the math, computations, and other things later. So, uh, as my first example, um, I want to look at a specific limit. The way this is said is the limit as x approaches 1 of the quantity 2x plus 3. That's the phrase. x goes to 1. So when x gets close to 1, what does 2x plus 3 equal? That's the question. As x gets close to 1. Not x actually equaling 1, but when x gets close to 1. That's the difference between um, a regular expression and evaluating it versus what we're doing here. So the word close, very important. It's crucial, in fact. Uh, x will be close to 1, but not equal to it. That is important. Let me bring up a calculator and show you some things here. Uh, typically, I put the equation in the y equals place so that I can graph and do whatever I want else I want to do with it. I've chosen the TI-84 calculators uh, because most people have these kind. All right, so I put in 2x plus 3 into y1. And then we're just going to do zoom 6 just to get a view of the graph. I don't even care about this part, to be honest. I just, in case some people don't have familiar with the calculator, uh, this course will actually help you out a little bit with that, although I'm no expert myself. <clears throat> so, as you can see, when x is close to 1, if you just take your uh, mouse pointer or anything and, and move it up to the graph, you'll see that the y value should be around 5. Now, if you press a second graph, or, or what is the table, it lets you uh, see the values uh, as you get close to, or equal to, a given number. So I want to be close to 1, so I'm going to change my start to, oh, let's see, 0 0.9. Yeah, and let me change. Delta table is, is the increments that it jumps in the tables. and, and just bear with me here. I want to put 0.2, not 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And then I want to look at the table again. I think there's going to be an error here. Uh, nope, it worked out right. So if you look at 0.9, the y value is 4.8. Oh, I see what it did. It had a trouble with my... Um, with what I had written before. I knew it was going to be a problem. So there we go, 0 0.2. Let's try this again. Second, and then access table. So I see when I have 0 0.9, the y value is 4.8. Uh, then when I have 1.1, the y value is 5.2. So those that's the important thing. Those are the closest numbers to 1. And I now know that my answer to this problem is somewhere between 4.8 and 5.2. But that's, while that may be close in some sense, that's not close enough. Uh, let me go back to the table and, and refine the values that I use. So this time, let's change the table start to 0.99. 0.99. I don't know why I put, there we go, 0.02. 0.9. Come on, one more nine. There you go. And let's go second table and look at my values now. Uh, when x is 0.99, the y comes out to be 4.98. When x is 1.01, 1 
the y value comes out to be 5.02. So the point here is that my limit is between 4.98 and 5.02. I'm going to copy this screen. And the, the way I, you, I have to copy with this application, there's no, there's no really a screen capture per se. I actually have to take a screenshot and um, save the image. So I've, I've just got a stock image that I use. I'll just keep overwriting as needed so I can make this process as quick as possible when I do it. <clears throat> so now we're inserting the picture into the note page. I got to make this thing bigger. It's impossible to see it there. They come in too small. I don't know why I wish they were bigger, but I'll make it bigger. Okay, now I want to stick to those X values that hover around 1. And my choices right here are 0.99 and 1.01. .01. Let me uh, pick a different color pen here to, to sort of circle the items of interest. So right now, I know that my answer is between 4.98 and 5.02. So, so far I can estimate it to, I guess, two decimal places right now. It's about five. It, look, I know this answer is going to come out to be five, but the purpose of this is to show you some of the steps we do for more complicated things than this. All right, so that's my next estimate. I've locked down, I guess, if I really want to say this, I've locked down one, de one decimal place. So what I'm going to do here is come back to the calculator and increase my accuracy. So I'm going to, instead of 0.99, I'm going to go 0.999. And then below I'm going to go 0.002. And let's take a look at the table again. The second table. All right, now if you look at my numbers, I've got 0.999 and 1.001. So I'm getting closer to the x equals 1 value that's my target. Let's copy this, put it in, and talk about those values. Inserting the picture. My stock example. Oh, what's it doing down there? Well, it can't be down there, so i got to move it around. there okay so now as I said before it looks to me like if I want to list the number of decimals that I've locked this down to now the answer to this problem is going to be between 4.998 and 5.002 so to two decimal places I have 5.00 so therefore my limit is now trapped between up. Uh, oh, uh, let me change the marker. So, anyways, now we know that the limit is somewhere between four point nine nine eight and five point oh oh two. So, the interesting thing about finding limits here, you, you notice, is that I don't actually just take the number one and plug it in. Now, I have a lot of a lot more material to present before I talk about what, why we don't just plug it in. There's so many complications here, but this is just so you can see the process. Anyways, right now I have two decimal places. Um, I think that I would like to go for three decimal places. Just for my own self, I, I seem to, uh, if I'm going to go for a decimal answer, I just usually default to three places. So let's bring the calculator back up again. This time, I think we'll put in 0.9999. Give me one more. There we go. And I'll do, as before, 0 0.0002. And then second table. I can now look at my numbers. You can see that I'm even closer to X now. X is in between the 0.999 and the 1.001. 
Let me paste this picture back in. Yeah, there it is over there. You gotta watch, at least I have to start watching. They, they get, um, it's easy to have your cursor left somewhere where you didn't intend it, especially if you're touching the screen with your hands or something, it'll put a cursor point there and goes the wrong place. So, okay, just as before, let's take a look at these numbers. My Y value is what I'm interested in for the limit. I can see that it's between 4.9998 and 5.0002. So to three decimal places, I have this at 5.000. Now, when you're approximating things, at least I, at least the way that I um, do it, I am not going to just simply write five as the answer when I've rounded at three decimal places. When I go to three decimal places, I'll actually write my answer as 5.000. This tells the reader that I um, am confident to three decimal places in my accuracy. If I just put a five, they would never in a million years guess that. So it, that's just my own thing. I, if, if you do something else, that's fine. It depends on how many places I ask you and things of that nature. Anyways. This is the, uh, the general idea. I'm going to do another more complicated example uh, for the next lecture. Uh, each of these things, I know this this one's kind of a long one. Probably I spent more time talking than I should have. I, I want to keep these under 10 minutes. Plus, these file sizes get huge if you... Um, these file sizes get huge uh, the longer they run, obviously. But... Here, well, I don't know if I'll talk about this one again. You might, hopefully, you went through the process with me next time.